in the story of creation, in those seven days, day six is the day in which we were created. And it's distinctive. Na'ase Adam, let us create Adam. Bitsalmenu uchid motenu, often translated as in our likeness and in our image. And that's worthy of a pause. The only thing that is created in the image of God to reflect God's presence in an immediate way is us. When we look at another person, particularly one who we have an emotional attachment to, we have the opportunity to both feel our aliveness and more. In seeing in the other person that which is a reflection of God, we have the opportunity to see ourselves living in a world of wonder. In that creation story, there's only one creation that's called holy, and that's the Sabbath. The next day, day seven, the Kadeshoto, and God sanctified the seventh day. Back to day six and our creation. There's another way to play with Bitsalmenu Uchid Mutenu, and that is in modern Hebrew. A camera is called a matzlema. A camera takes a picture in which we are able to take with us what our eyes have seen. Bitsalmenu is the ability to look at things clearly, with open eyes, accurately, to describe what's in front of us. Chid mutenu, in our image, is the root dimion with imagination, another human gift to be a reflection of God, the ability to say, let us make man in our image, which is to say, God conceptualized our creation even before we were created. And so we have this ability to use our imagination to see for an architect a building before it's created, or in this moment, to reflect on the love of a beloved friend and to know that our friend is more than the matzlema, more than the picture. The picture is what they look like. That's the description, if you will, you know, the description on a driver's license. But to know and to love somebody is to engage in imagination. It's to see with that other capacity that's uniquely ours to be fully human, to see how they touch us, how we connect, how they bring us love, warmth, a way of seeing goodness in our lives that again is not seeing in quantifiable ways, but seeing in ways that are the vision of imagination. One of the explanations of why we say Kaddish when we have a loved one pass is because the world is missing an element of that beauty, an element of that grace, an element of that goodness that for God too is an absence. And so we praise God, so the rabbis imagine, because God too is feeling the air is knocked out, there's something missing. And so the capacity to be human is the capacity to see the world with honest eyes. It's Salmenu. And eyes that, if you will, are the eyes of music, the eyes of poetry, the eyes of love. I had the privilege this week to spend time with the gift of CSP providing an important Jewish teacher of our day who lives in New York, Peter Geffen, talk about two of his important teachers, the Reverend Martin Luther King and Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel. He, Peter Geffen, in the mid-60s was a college student who spent his summers in the South as part of the Freedom Fighters, having lost one of his dear friends 
who was murdered at that time in the civil rights movement. And he described being with Reverend King, hearing Reverend King both privately and publicly, and having many ways his life shaped by those experiences. But even more, he talked about Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel, the great teacher of the Jewish Theological Seminary, who went from teaching about God to marching in the civil rights movement and to be a founder of the anti-Vietnam movement and to say when he marched in Selma, my feet were praying. And Peter Geffen, as part of this opportunity to be engaged with him, reflecting on these two important teachers in his life, has uncovered a interview done in 1971 on CBS television with Abraham Joshua Heschel. And this is the last piece I'd like to share. Rabbi Heschel said that the goal of religion is to cultivate what it means to be human. And ultimately, he said, what it means to be human is two things. One is to see the world with imagination, to see the world each morning as we awake as a surprise. We know intellectually that the sun will rise. We can check the precise minute. But to awake in the morning with a sense of moda anila fanecha, grateful am I before you, God, my awakening is not a given. The fact that I can open my eyes and see beauty and see beauty is to be experienced as wonder. And to experience the world as wonder is to feel awe and to be drawn to the presence of a loving creator. But secondly, he, Rabbi Heschel, emphasized, not just in that interview, but in his life, that to use the imagination is, yes, to feel in your heart a tear when a loved one dies, to feel the presence of the goodness of those who are in our lives, but more. The test, he said, ultimately of relationship as a human being is to see all people as created in the image of God, all people as worthy of dignity, all people when they suffer as our concern. Lo ta'amod al dam re'echa, the Bible commands, do not stand idly by the blood of your neighbor. Al tit alem, do not be indifferent. Rabbi Heschel lived a life of the study of text, but his life culminated with taking words of Torah and translating them into deed, but more. For those who knew him, which were many of my teachers, he continued to be a presence in their lives even when he was gone. As a reminder that we are created with these capacities to look at the world and to see injustice, to look at the world and to see beauty, to look at others and see a brother and a sister, even if we've never met, and to know that the goal of our faith is to be worthy and to live as if we are a reflection of God's image in the world. We bonus a master of the universe. For those who have losses, we extend condolences, knowing that to live life is to love. And when a loved one passes, it's to feel the pain of absence. May those who have lost be able to integrate that loss in a way that with time that loved one is even more a source of presence. And for all of us, may we live with Salmenu Uchid Montenu, knowing that we have the capacity to see the world with open eyes analytically, 
but may we also cultivate our love of music and song and dance and more. The ability in this moment to see Shabbat as a bride, a gift, a lover, that joy is ours as we welcome and may we welcome God Shabbat as your gift to us. Amen.